small town, Bozeman, Montana. Um, spent all of my, my teen years there, and we went camping often as kids. Um, and my parents just instilled the outdoors um, in myself and my two older brothers when we were very young. I love to hike. That's, that's just my thing. It's where I find peace in the solitude. It's me time. It's very relaxing. My brother, he's uh, active duty Navy, and he got stationed in Coronado and I moved out here to be closer to him. I actually met Eddie uh, in the very first, probably six months of when I moved here. He was friends with some of Eddie's friends and we all met together one night at a, a local spot and um, from that day on for the next 14 and a half years, we were very close friends. Eddie was at the time uh, active duty as a Navy SEAL uh, stationed here in Coronado. One of the draws to Eddie was just his unique character in that, you know, when he loved, he loved big, and he would do anything in the world for you. Um, so it was, it was an honor to be one of his friends. The thing that made Eddie thrive was being deployed. Like that was his world, that was his environment, that's what he loved and that's where he was the best. One of the things that was hardest for him was coming back and not doing that job and, you know, being, being here and um, not being over there. Not doing that anymore was really hard on him and it was hard for him to cope with that and come to the you know realization that hey I'm I'm not a seal anymore. Fire. You hear a, a a noise that reminds you of a, a gunshot or a trigger or something and it it spurs those those memories that you had over there and I think early on it started um, after his first deployment, but Eddie would never lead on to anything's wrong. My initial thought was Eddie would never do that. You know, Eddie, Eddie would never take his own life because he's got three children. He would never leave them behind. He would never leave his wife behind. Eddie had access to a gun his whole life. You know, and if he was going to do it, you know, would he have done it sooner? Why, why now? I had a million questions and none of them really got answered. It was hard to believe. It's, I think it still is hard to believe because he just wasn't the type to surrender. Two o'clock in the morning, shot out of bed, and I was like, that's it. And it was this idea of creating a foundation in Eddie's name and in his honor. The idea behind Tadpole Foundation is to instill the outdoors in our veteran community for guys that um, have been affected by post-traumatic stress, um, traumatic brain injury, combat trauma, any of those things, and just take them on extreme outdoor adventures and um, bring some sort of peace and calm and you know, awe-inspiring moments to these guys to help get them out of whatever darkness that is starting to seep into their life. Losing Eddie was huge, and it's not something you just get over. But being able to to take that and just go in the backcountry, it's amazing. You know, just the, the healing that hiking does. And had I done that with Eddie, would things have been different? Um, maybe. My advice for friends, spouses, you know, even if they're the veteran themselves that has it, is just to, there's so many doors out there, you just need to find them and open them and and look for that help. I was told that, you know, every time you would deploy, uh, you know, I don't know what I would do if, if something ever happened to you. And now I do. time we were together was was awesome and um, it was a, a cool friendship to have um, I just I loved our talks and conversations and certainly something I will always remember